Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Albert Varis. We're going to be talking about leadership through service. And by the time we're done, we're going to know some action steps that you guys can take in order to beef up your resume, in order to be a better job candidate, in order to gain valuable experience so that you guys can go into the career that you choose. Before we get into that, I want to point out a very prevalent problem that exists in our community and, and for specifically for young people 16 to 19 years old. I don't know how much you guys know about um, unemployment rates or what that means, but so that you guys start to understand the higher the unemployment rate, the more people aren't working, so you want to have a lower unemployment rate. And for 16 to 19 year olds, it's 24%. So that means in this room, one in four 16 to 19 year olds may have a tough time and will have a tough time finding a job. So that's the bad news. In addition, there are about 2.5 million, 2.5 million young people who are either unemployed or underemployed. So you may have a job, but you may not get enough hours. You may have a tough time find, find, trying to find a job and trying to secure a job. So that's the bad news. The good news is that in Nebraska, we live in a great state. I mentioned Nebraska is opportunity here. Nebraska's unemployment rate for 16 to 19 year olds is 13 and a half percent. So a little bit less than the national average. You know, we don't have to get all crazy in the, into the numbers, but it's a little bit less than half of the national average, which tells me there's more opportunity in here for you all because it's, there's more jobs available for 16 to 19 year olds. So there's bad news, there's good news. And I don't know if this is good or bad news, but the job market is going to be competitive. Can I quickly see a show of hands? Who in here has a job? Currently today is employed. OK. Keep your hands up. Can I see a show of hands? Who in here would like to be working right now? Who in here would love a job right now? OK. So if we look around, the majority of the room either has a job. Thank you. You can put your hands down. The majority of the room in here has a job or wants a job. So that kind of gives this conversation a little bit of re relevance so that you guys can walk out of here with something concrete that will put you above your competitors. Because you're going to be competing. It's going to be competitive. And there's some specific ways to set yourself up for success. And that's through service. So before we get into the service part of it, I want to quickly talk about leadership, because that's the start of this conversation, is leadership through service. So can I quickly see, there's a statement up here. If you can please take a look at it. And for those who can't read it, I'll read it out loud. Leaders aren't born, they are made. And they are made just like anything else through hard work. Can I quickly see a show of hands? Can I get a thumbs up if you agree with this statement that leaders aren't made, that they're made through hard work? OK, that's, and that's fine. I'm not looking for everybody to agree. Can I get a sideways if you aren't, aren't sure if leaders are made? Can I get a sideways? OK, and can I get a thumbs down if you disagree with this statement? Thumbs down if you disagree. No, nobody disagrees with this statement? Perfect. That's, that's beautiful, because that's what we're going to be talking about is leadership. So I just want to try to paint the picture. I want to try to inspire you guys. And I'm going to give you guys some specific things that you can do to be able to come up. OK, so we talked about leadership. And now service. Can I get some brave folks in here to talk, to give me an example of what is service or um, volunteering, community service? They have different names. Yes, ma'am? OK. OK. So her example of service is volunteering and taking care and babysitting children while their parents are bettering their life, taking classes. That's one example. Every Sunday, I teach catechism on my church. Okay. Service. service at church, providing us, helping out the church. You guys want to know how you can get a job, right? Through service, is gaining and strengthening your skills. So let's say I don't know anything about any. I don't know anything about web design. I want to start to learn a little bit more about it. So if I'm able to connect with a nonprofit organization 
and they're able to say, well, I need you to help me maybe make a website, that can be one thing that I can gain a skill in. And the same thing with babysitting children. I want to be a teacher, but nobody, nobody's going to allow me to teach their kids. I'm 16 years old. Well, by being at church or being at the community group and working with children, you start to build your experience base. And if I'm an employer of an after-school program and I have two students in front of me to hire, one has experience babysitting children for a year at a, at a community organization, and one does not, guess who I'm gonna hire? The ones with experience are the ones who are offered employment. The second point is to test, learn, and grow. So, and, and what I mean by that is to test the waters. I want to be an engineer, right? I want to be an engineer, but if I don't know anything about engineering, I may not be interested in it. I may not want to work in math. You know, I may not want to work on a computer. You know, engineers, they work on a computer. I don't know if you guys know that, but engineers, they may sound awesome and they do make money, but they work on a computer. They sit on a computer and they're working with design systems and doing things like that. If I don't want to work sitting on a computer, maybe an engineer is not a right pathway. So I'll go to, that way I'll avoid going to college, paying a bunch of money to become something that I end up finding out that I don't like. So you get to test the waters by service. You learn, obviously, and then you get to grow professionally. You, you get to do some of those things. All right, this was talked about earlier today again, expanding your network. I've been able to build my personal network to be able to help students, but what we encourage our students to do is to build their own networks. And it's great to have friends, a lot of friends, but if none of your friends are employed, what good does that do if you're trying to get a job? You need to find you know, a network where people are serious and people are employed and, and so forth. The next one is to land a job. Take a look at the picture. I need experience for a job, but I need a job for experience. That's a, you know, you're caught between a rock and a hard place. If you need experience for a job, but you need a job to gain experience, how can you gain experience? How can you gain, gain experience? I think one of you guys said it, through service. It's a simple way. Service looks different for your needs. When we think of service, it doesn't have to be an everyday thing after school. It could be a once a month. It could be a one-time event where you spend a whole day doing something. Um, so think about service as a way to gain and strengthen your skills, test, learn, and grow, network, and then the last one, or to land a job. So those are some of the principal reasons why you guys should start thinking about service. And the last one is to do good. Anybody believe in karma here? What goes around comes around? What goes around comes around? I think we all, I think the majority of you guys believe it. I feel it, I see that it's true. I figure if I spend all my energy trying to do good, trying to help people out, it'll come back to me. And through service, you have that, as a, you have that, you know, good karma. Good karma always comes back to you and pays dividends. But then you also have the other things like networking, landing a job, all those types of things. Who has seen this before? I hope, I hope all of you have seen it before. All right, this is a career education model. So what this shows you is any career that you will plan on going to, into will fall into here. This is like the core of it. So there's only six categories, and no matter what career you're going into, it will fall into here. A doctor, for example, where will a doctor be? In health science. If you want to be a the police officer, do you guys know where a police officer would fall in? Human services. So you guys get the idea. So all careers are represented into this. So specifically, and this is an example that I already used. If you're interested in going to a career in business, marketing, management, those types of things, and you need to do good, you need to you know, start to gain experience, um, you guys have the advantage over us old people where you guys were born with technology. You guys understand technology in a way that I may never understand technology. You guys are called digital natives. So you guys already have an ability that a lot of companies and organizations are interested in, which is social networking. Um, social networking, in addition to hooking up with your friends and you know, seeing each other online, for businesses, it means money. And for organizations, it means staying connected. And if you guys feel comfortable, like you know how to run your Twitter, you know how to run Facebook, you know how to run um, Vines, you know how to do all those different types of things, you have 
of value that you can offer to a company or an organization that will give you the experience and then will also connect you with their contacts. So if you're thinking about going into business, marketing, those types of things, that's something very simple that you can do. The examples that I'm going to show up here, these are just, these are just six very basic examples. Um, so I don't want you guys to think that you're limited to only these. Um, the next one, for human services and education careers. If you're interested in going into human services, you want to be a police officer, social worker, a teacher, a principal, any of those things, something simple that you can do tomorrow if you wanted to was to mentor a young person. Mentoring may sound um, intimidating. You guys are now older than elementary age kids, right? But think back to when you were in elementary school and think back to when you were having a rough day and you were getting picked on or you weren't getting your assignments done and things like that. And all you know is adults that are sweating you and telling you get your work done, you're grounded, things like that. You need an outlet, right? You need somebody to sound off on and be like, this isn't right, or I want to do this, or I want to do that. And you just need somebody to listen to you. That's the extent of mentoring. It's not complicated. Health science. You guys are all young here, so I don't expect for you guys to go into a hospital and start running in and saying, you do this, you do that, I'm going to do surgery, I'm going to you know, take this person's blood pressure. That's not realistic at this point right now. That can definitely be in the cards for the future. And some of you guys may be. Some of you guys may be CNAs already for, as, as I'm thinking about this. But a simple way that you guys can gain experience in the healthcare career, in a healthcare field and start meeting nurses and radio techs and doctors and um, the ones who do data management and start to build your network is by visiting hospital, visiting a hospital. And me as a medical, you know, if I were a medical professional and I'm looking at students to get into UNMC or doing, you know, or, or going into a job, that tells me that you have a heart, that you have a soul, that you're more than just a body and an application. It tells me that you give a crap and that you're willing to put, spend some time with a young person who's sick. And that's the same thing. And, I, and I'm speaking to you from what I hear employers tell me. I meet with people in HR on a weekly basis and I set up students with jobs and internships and things like that. So what I'm sharing with you is what I hear from the field. So skilled and technical sciences. So you're interested in welding, being a mechanic, doing different types of work with your hands, skilled, skilled employees who are going to be making more money. And, and on, a quickly, on a quick side note, if you have any interest in welding, being a machinist, being a tool and die professional, you will be making more money than with a two-year certificate than 27% per, than of people with a four-year degree. So just keep that in mind. That's a total side note, and that's like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to make sure that you guys know that there's lots of opportunities in the skilled trades. So that's a side note. Back to um, service. If you're interested in doing that type of activity, you can build a house with Habitat for Humanity. Your communities may not have a Habitat for Humanity, but I know churches do um, home builds. Um, and this is an opportunity for you guys maybe to talk to a counselor, or to reach out to your construction company. Um, and to ask them, are there any service opportunities or any volunteer opportunities um, if you want to get into that, into that business or into that type of work? For communication and information systems, um, building a website. Any web developers here? Anybody has built a website using GoDaddy or any of the, of the simple ones? Okay. Um, and it's, it's not that hard. And the reason I can say it's not that hard is because I've done it. Um, building a website and not like not writing code, not getting all complicated. A simple thing that you guys can do, whether it's your YMCA in your in your neighborhood or a you know business, a, a child her, a child care center, or someone that needs a service. If you feel comfortable with technology, you can design a website. And the last one, and this is probably my favorite because after this, I'll share with you what I do for service. Because um, I'm not going to be talking about telling you guys to do service when I'm not in it myself. Um, but the last one is, if you're interested in agriculture, food, or natural resources, a very simple thing, again, a very simple thing that you guys would be able to do is connect with your church, with your school, with a library, with a food pantry, with a number of different organizations that probably already exist in your communities, and build a community garden, maintain a community garden. Anybody in here grows food, has kept a garden, or at home, or somewhere? I love it. I love it. That's a very simple way that you guys can network with professionals if you want to get into food you know you want to end up working food sciences 
you need to have experience. Straight up, you know, if you're working at Burger King, that's, that's experience, that's good. But if you're working at Burger King and you have some service and the person that you're competing against also has experience working at Burger King and no service, employers nine times out of ten will take whoever has the most experience and if you have a little bit extra value because you have service you'll be more attractive to them when you're applying for a job it helps you out you want to align them with your strengths if you know your strengths you're gonna to want to guide them towards it if you're a very outgoing person you probably want to do something where you're outgoing not where you're closed in and you're not be able to do anything with other people where you're closed on a computer if you're more introverted and you don't really like people and you prefer to be on a computer, you probably want to maybe do the, some of the design stuff, social media marketing, things like that. Okay, so I've talked about it. I, I sense you guys are kind of have a good idea of what leadership and service and how you can leverage it for opportunities. But so what happens when we have a plan sometimes and we don't write it down, what happens to that plan? You forget it, you put it on the back burner and eventually you procrastinate and then that plan, nothing happens with it. Well, what I want you guys to do today are four things. And we're gonna do this right now, we're gonna do it as a group and we're gonna report out. Um, the first thing is Brainstorm and select one service opportunity that you will participate in in 2014. Think about it. Obviously, we're going to spend a couple minutes doing this. So think about what service opportunity. I've mentioned a variety of different options. What service opportunity are you going to do in 2014? So that's the first thing to think about. The second thing is identifying what's the first step. What's the first step that you're going to need to take in order to take, in order to go into a service opportunity that's going to help build your resume and help you land a job? What does that first step look like? Is it talking to your counselor and finding out what is available through school? Is it talking to somebody who you already know that volunteers somewhere that you want to start volunteering there too? Is it sitting down with your favorite teacher and telling them that you're interested but you have no idea? Is it talking to your parents? What does that first step look like? The next one is select a date. We need to be timely. We need to select a date. We need to get started. You can't just wait and wait and push it off. Your resume isn't as strong as it could be. Maybe you don't end up getting into the school that you want to go into. Maybe service just bumps you up enough. So select a date where you are going to take the next step. And then the last thing that you're going to do, and that I'm going to ask you to kindly do, is to take out your phone and text someone. Text your mentor, and if you don't have a phone, you can write it down. I don't, I don't, don't feel bad if you don't have a phone with you, because you can write it down. But if you do have a phone, take it out and text a mentor, a teacher, a friend. I even included my, my number up here. If you don't know who to hit up, you don't know who to text, text me. When you guys are thinking about next steps, this is the next step. Um, so Albert, I will continue helping my local church coach little kids play soccer. That's awesome. That is a very simple way. My wife did that throughout college. All right, so Jessica is going to volunteer one Sunday per month at church as a youth minister, taking care of babies. Let me see the rest of the message. Oh my God, they're coming in like crazy. Good job, guys. All right, so Jessica taking care of babies in the nursery. And her first step, thank you, Jessica, for including a first step. I, talk, I will talk to a youth leader, or I talked to the youth leader not too long ago to continue to volunteer. So she's already ahead of the game. All right, in March 2014, oh, blowing up. You guys are going to make me work. In 2014, I'm going to make children happy at the children's hospital by playing with them over and reading to them. My first step is to tell my father about how to sign up for this in a hospital. So I will seek a local internships at a business at summer, and the first step will be talking to the guidance counselor and parents to help find me a business that will be right for me to do what I can with my career. Thank you, Nicole. All right, so 
We have about five minutes left, and I just want to leave five minutes open for questions. And yes, ma'am. Um, how did you start the nonprofit? I didn't start the nonprofit. I stepped into it. I was blessed. This organization has been around for 20 years, and I was looking at urban agriculture. Um, I was looking at agriculture because that's our number one um, economic driver in the state. And then I was like, I wonder if there's anything like that in Omaha, any, any urban farms. And then I found one, and I started volunteering. And by volunteering, then they asked me, do you want to join the board? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And then they said, do you, do you want to be board president? And I said, no, that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> and then, they, and then they, they supported me, and, they, and then I finally did it. I hope you guys texted your mentors or your teachers. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and make the most of it.